Looking at this wonderful concept of servant leadership and how it applies to us here as Houstonians in our personal, professional, and public lives, and how we can apply the principles of servant leadership to really serve our community, be, of great, be a great servant, and do it in a very selfless way that allows the human beings that you're helping and working with and, serve, and serving to become more fully developed as human beings to fulfill and reach their God-given potential, and it really is a great concept and element to have in our community. But really, you have to be clear as a servant leader on your thinking first. It really starts with how do you in your thinking reflect and meditate on what you say you think and believe. Then the next level, what do you feel about what you say you think and believe. And therefore, based upon your thinking and feeling, what action behaviors are you called to perform. Action behaviors takes on two levels always, letting go perhaps of negative action behaviors and taking on positive action behaviors in service to other human beings. I believe that we're put on the face of the earth for one reason and one reason only, and that is to serve our fellow human being. As a servant leader to do that, I have to first do a selfish thing. The only time I get to be selfish, selfish as a servant leader, I have to take care of myself so I can be readily able to assist and help other people. Therefore, there are five things that I have to do every day. Proper nutrition, proper physical activity, attention to my mental health, spirituality, and laughter. Proper physical activity, proper nutrition, attention to my mental health, spirituality, and laughter so that I can be readily available as a servant leader to help and serve other human beings so that I can be selfless in my service to other human beings. I believe that. That's my motto and my credo that I've lived my life by. Like all of us, though, I was hard-headed. And I had a couple of strokes. Took me a year to learn, literally a year to learn how to walk and talk and feed myself, tie my tie, tie my shoelaces all over again. And ever since then, I've been very clear through the talks and lectures I gave for the American Heart and Stroke Association across this country about being proactive, about being that servant leader, taking care of yourself first so that you can therefore be in service to other human beings. That's a very important piece of this servant leadership discussion this evening. Look out for each other, be each other's brothers and sisters and keepers, question of who's our neighbor, how do I serve my neighbor, how do I help my neighbor, all that is entailed in the vision. We all know that vision. We can articulate that vision. We try to hold that vision up high. That's not the issue. The issue is this bottom part, which is reality. And reality is always trying to pull the vision down. Reality is always trying to pull the vision down. The great thing about this vision reality context is that this tension here, this tension between vision and reality, this gap, this gap is where we all live. I refer to human beings simply as gap people. People living in the tension, in the gap. And what does the gap stand for? Great action people. So the question always from a certain leadership perspective, what are great action people going to do to make sure that reality and all the negative, all the issues, all the things that go on, that is always trying to pull the vision down that helps keep the vision high? I had a, a wonderful friend of mine who, who this, past, this past week, uh, Father Jock Weber, uh, Jesuit, SJ. Uh, we always teased him that SJ meant social justice because he was a social justice person, really stands for society of Jesus. But Father Weber was a mentor. I worked with him for many years. And he said to, them, to me about three things about this vision reality thing. He said, the only way you keep the vision high is to surround yourself by the right people. You are known by the people you hang out with, the people you work with, the people you socialize with, the people in your personal, professional, and public life. You gain strength or you get negativity from those people. He said there are three categories of people to stay away from at all costs. Turn around and run. Negative people, negative people, the drama kings and queens, and the somebody done the wrong song people. Who are still mad at something and somebody that happened five and ten years ago. The other person probably forgot it, don't even remember what it was. But they're still bitter. They're still hateful. They won't help anybody. They won't serve anybody. And he was very right about that. Do not walk. Turn around and run. Because you will never be able to talk about the vision. And you'll never be able to do that triangle. The triangle being what? The top of the triangle is about accountability. The right of the triangle is about personal responsibility. And the left is servant leadership. Those three things work together. 
And how do they work together? They work together this way. It works together this way. And I gave you a quick little piece, but I'm going to make it concrete so you can take it away with you. And all my NHPO people and our wonderful servant leadership, Leadership Institute, know what I'm about to do. In fact, we now greet each other this way. It is really simply about what do I think, what do I think as a human being when I stop and reflect and meditate about what I really believe. Not what other people want me to believe, tell me to believe, not what the media wants me to think and believe. What do I as a human being think and believe? And based on what I say I think and believe, what do I feel about what I say I think and believe? What resonates in my being? What makes my heart ache? What makes my soul yearn to do something? And based upon what I say I think and feel, what action behaviors am I called to perform? Action behaviors takes on two points. Letting go of negative action behaviors and taking on positive action behaviors in service to other human beings. So this is the way it operates. The head, the heart, and the gut. To think, to feel, to act. The fancy way. The cognitive, the affective, behavioral parts of my being. The past, the present, the future. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The message, the mission, the motivation. The traditional, the transitional, the transformational. Because that's all it is. We want to make life as human beings complex. Because if we make it complex, we don't have to get it. It really is simple. What do I, as the human being, think? When I stop and reflect and meditate, get away from my little machine, get away from my technology, find me a quiet, quiet, special place to be silent, to listen to the voice inside of me. When I do that, what comes out of that process? What speaks to my heart and my soul? Because if you get in touch with that voice inside of you, it's where your passion lies, where your passion lives. What do I think? What do I feel about what I say I think and believe? And what action and behaviors am I called to perform? What I've learned throughout my life the people who don't get it don't want to get it. Because as long as they can say they don't get it, they don't know that they can't be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But when I know you know and you know that I know that you know. <laughs> now in the relationship that we're born, that we're developing and bonding together with, relationships has two components. First, it has to be developed on mutual trust and respect. The second part is commitment and accountability. The dirtiest, nastiest word you can use with adults is commitment and accountability. Because commitment and accountability is about change. No one likes change. Don't get excited about change. The wet baby. <laughs> Adults don't like change. All right. So the question is, how do we realize that that commitment and accountability is what it's all about? When you commit to me and I commit to you, you get to hold me accountable to the commitment. I get to hold you accountable to the commitment. I would be derelict in my duty if I did not hold you accountable to the commitment. Servant leaders understand that the servant leader community holds each other accountable to the commitments in which we make to each other, not as individuals and I and me, but about we and us, because it's not about I and me, it's about we and us, it's about service to other human beings. You did not commit to me, you committed to us to do something on behalf of the community for the common good of all. That's the message. That's the essence. Servant leaders also understand the classic definition of adulthood. Adulthood means seizing the opportunity for creativity and initiative place of complaining about what cannot be done. I keep telling people every day, don't bring me issues and problems. Bring me solutions. Bring me ideas. Bring me creativity. Bring me innovation. Bring me something. I know all the negative. I know all the issues and problems. What are we as a community collectively going to do to solve those issues for the common good of all of us? It really is that simple. It is understanding understanding and believing there's a difference between tolerance and acceptance. We get those words because it was so easy during the 60s and 70s, during the civil rights movement, during the women's movement, during those issues to say, okay, I don't love you, I don't have to love you, but at least I can tolerate you. You don't tolerate other human beings. I live in Texas. I tolerate the roaches, the ants, the mosquitoes, and the heat. <laughs> I'm not going to put a human being on the same level of something I'm just going to tolerate all my life, my life and never love. Because essence of servant leadership is unconditional love. When you have had those educators as we've always had in our lives, not teachers, there's a difference between a teacher and an educator. All of us who've had those educators in our lives that we can still name and speak to today, who were true servant leaders who gave us what? Unconditional love. Not because I needed it, not because I deserved it, not because I wanted it, just because. I was another human being and they were, I was there to learn, they were there to teach, I was a child, they were an adult and they gave me unconditional love. 
in the first era of segregation when I went to my little poor, my little poor colored school. That's what we were back then. I would put my little poor colored education up against anyone's education. I got a great education. Poverty and one race school had nothing to do with it because every educator gave each student unconditional love and I thrive and I learned. That element is missing today in our schools. In many of our schools, particularly in this resegregated environment. So the challenges for us as a community is a challenge of serving leadership. The serving leadership community is a doing community. It's a giving community. It's a caring community. It's a loving community. It asks only one question. How may I serve you? And how may I be of service to the collective good for all of us? The, the dots connecting is back to what I said about your thinking, feeling, and acting. Let me go through that real quick. The head, the heart, and the gut, to think, to feel, to act, the fancy way, the cognitive, the affective, the behavioral parts of our being, the past, the present, the future, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the message, the mission, the motivation, the traditional, the transitional, the transformation. That's all it really is. What do I as a human being, when I stop and reflect and meditate, what do I think about what I say I believe? Not what others want me to believe, but what do I think and believe? Based upon what I say I have, I think and believe, what do I feel about what I say I think and believe? What passion comes up in me about what I say I I think and feel, and therefore, based upon my thinking and feeling, what action behaviors, that's where it, the rubber meets the road. And it's not words. If words would have done it by now, it surely would have been done. It's about action and behaviors. In fact, use words only as necessary, because you don't have to tell somebody you care about them. You have to tell somebody you love them. It is shown through your actions and your behaviors.